Only Murders in the Building is easily one of the best TV shows to come out this year. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel a Lifestyle Critic, I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Only Murders in the Building, which is a refreshingly awesome brand new murder mystery comedy series about three characters who one day meet in an elevator and share a passion for true crime. I mean all of the aspects of this TV series were absolutely awesome. So for example all of the murder mystery moments were really really cool. All of the podcast moments are absolutely brilliant. All of the comedic moments in general actually were just true comedy gold. And also just the weekly release of each episode was really, really working really, really well. I mean, by the end of the run, by around episode eight, you can put all of the clues together and work out who the murderer is. But you know, that being said, it is incredibly brilliant viewing and super, super compelling. And I cannot wait to break it all down for you in this TV series review. <laughs> So the storyline is centered around three characters, Charles, who is a semi-retired TV actor, Oliver, who is a struggling Broadway director, and Mabel, who is an apartment renovator, and they all live in the Arconia, which is a luxury apartment in New York City. One day, by chance, all three of these characters meet in an elevator with another character called Tim Kono, who then mysteriously is murdered, and all three of these characters decide to band together and try to work out what's going on. As the episodes progress, more and more clues are found out. A lot of new suspects are also considered. A lot of red herrings in there as well, and loads and loads of twists and turns. And each episode also focuses on one of the lead characters, so you find out a lot more about their backstory, and also developing the plot as the series progresses as well, which is really, really cool. And of course, overlining all of this is the podcast that all three of these characters are producing which just brings so much comedy gold to this series and really keeps the excitement going and makes this TV series really unique and individual at the same time. Now from a positive point of view, I feel like all of the murder mystery aspects of this TV series are really, really gripping. I love all of the twists and turns that are happening across this series. And you also find out a lot more about the backstory of the Tim Kono character, which makes him really interesting as a character. As well, I absolutely love the dynamic between all three of these actors and all three of these characters as well. You wouldn't instantly put all of these three people together, but they just work so brilliantly and you can just tell that they're all enjoying themselves so much making this TV series, which really does translate for the audience's enjoyment as well as it's just so brilliant. It's super bingeable, only around 30 minutes per episode, so you can really quickly go throughout the whole series, especially now that it's all available, which is really, really cool. It really makes it unmissable as well. Each episode, I remember watching it every single week. And you just cannot wait for the next episode to air as it's just so good. The theme tune is so, so brilliant. All of the music that they have across this episode as well is just so brilliant. And you're so invested, not only in the plot, but also in the characters as well. And speaking of the characters, they are just so brilliant. I feel like all of the actors are just brilliantly bringing their A-game into it and it's just so hilarious. Literally, every few minutes has another joke happening which just makes this episode and the series as a whole just so, so good. And like I said, of course, overriding all of it is the podcast, which is just so iconic. And I just love all of the voiceovers that they have when they're narrating the podcast and just the podcast in and of itself in terms of them trying to make it a lot bigger and a lot more successful is really, really cool. And they also have one episode which doesn't have any dialogue spoken in it as well which really makes it individual as a series as well. However, from a negative point of view, like I said, towards the end of the series, it is a little bit predictable in terms of who the murderer is going to be. I also feel like they could have added a few more murders in this series as well. And certain moments are a little bit slow, but you know, all in all from a storyline point of view, I have to say only murders in the building is definitely A grade material. <laughs> So one of the many draws about Only Murders in the Building is its phenomenal cast and characters. They've literally got such awesome cast members, not only for the main characters, but also for guest appearances as well, which is really, really cool. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, we have Steve Martin, who is so awesome as the Charles Hayden Savage character. He instantly recaptures his 90s comedic brilliance in this TV series, super, super likeable. And like I said, he was a bit of a one-hit wonder from a TV series point of view in terms of this character having a hit with a fictional TV series called Brazos. And literally in every single episode, they make fun of this character for those reasons. 
But like I said, as a character, he's super, super likable, super endearing. And just the physical comedy that Steve Martin is bringing with this character is just absolutely awesome. We also have his father of the bride partner in crime, Martin Short, in this series as well, playing the Oliver character who is a struggling theatrical director. And he is just equally hilarious in this TV series, a lot more slapstick comedy. And he is just so obsessed with the podcast. And I just feel like even though they do rinse that joke across this series, all of the times in which Martin is doing all of those performances are just so good. And you can just see how passionate this guy is in terms of trying to make the podcast really, really successful, but also from a murder mystery point of view, as well as interacting with all of the different characters, as well as his son, I feel like he's doing such a good job. We then have Selena Gomez, who is really rounding up this trio as the Mabel character. She's a bit more serious compared to the other two, and is also a lot more savvy and is in the apartment because she's renovating it for her aunt who actually lives there, but she really rounds off the car so, so well and bounces off Steve Martin and Martin Short so well and is really bringing a new modern dimension and a younger dimension in terms of technology and an understanding of how things are happening in this world and in turn is able to bring a lot of value to the murder mystery solving trio, which is just working so, so well. We also have Tina Fey, who is playing a character called Cindy Canning, who is hosting a really successful podcast in this fictional world and I feel like these three characters are in awe of this character and even meet her up one day to try to get advice from her which is absolutely brilliant. We also have Amy Ryan who is playing a character called Jan and she is dating the Charles character played by Steve Martin and she brings a lot more new dynamism to this group as well and I just feel like they just work together so so well. Speaking of another group member we also have Aaron Dominguez who is playing a character called Oscar that used to be a friend of Tim and of Mabel's as well and is recently released from prison and shares a bit of history with all of these different characters so it brings a lot of new dimensions to the group. We also have Nathan Love who is playing a character called Teddy who is sponsoring the guy's podcast and you don't know if you can trust him or if you can't trust him. We of course have Tim Kono himself, who is the murdered character. But also when you jump into the past, this character even narrates a few episodes and you really get to find out a lot more about him as the series progresses, which is really great. We also have Detective Williams, who was really sure that this was a suicide attempt. But then as the episodes progress, of course, you know that it was a bit of a murder mystery happening here. So from a cast and character's point of view, they all definitely bring their A game. And it's not only really great to solve all of the mysteries with all of these different characters, all of the comedic moments as well are absolutely brilliant. So from a visuals point of view, this series is really, really good as well. It looks really, really polished. It feels a bit like a sitcom at points as it's mainly set in this luxury apartment in New York City, but they do venture out as well into the world of New York as well, which is really, really cool. The music definitely adds so much vibrancy and dynamism in this series as well. And of course, all of the voiceover podcast work by all of the three leads is really, really great too. And all of their murder mystery boards, when they're putting all of the clues together, really is great as a tool to connect each episode. And I feel like from a visuals point of view, this series is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> So from a comparison point of view, even though Only Murders in the Building definitely is unique in the space that it has created, for example, blending murder mystery and comedies, a little bit like murder mystery, the Netflix movie, I would also say there are aspects that you can compare it to. So for example, the murder mystery aspects, even though it's of course not a horror, I feel like you can compare it to the Scream TV series and also to the third season in particular of 13 Reasons Why. It's also a little bit similar as well to Jonathan Creek and to Sherlock Holmes and I'd also be able to compare this TV series to Nancy Drew and I know you're going to laugh at the next one but a little bit to Scooby-Doo as well and then from a comedic point of view I feel like it's really really similar to all of the classic 90s comedic movies and so the blend of all of these different attributes together really does make Only Murders in the Building so brilliant. <laughs> So overall, I'm sure you can tell I absolutely loved Only Murders in the Building. I wasn't sure what to expect when I was first watching this TV series, but I was super pleasantly surprised as it progressed, as it was just so brilliant, so captivating. I love all of the mixture of murder mystery and of course, all of the comedic moments, all of the podcasts, the excellent A-list talent that they've got, and they're just playing all of their parts so well. And the mystery itself is super compelling, really, really gripping, and certain episodes you're actually really fearing for the lives of these lead characters, which is just so, so awesome. I already kind of wait for the second season to drop, but as far as the first season is concerned, I have to give it a massive eight out of 10. 
I'd love to hear what you thought of this TV series, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.